Perfect. Okay, so uh, hello everyone. Um, today I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about our recent efforts to understand the electronic structure of twisted bilayer graphene. So uh, a twisted bilayer graphene is a, a moiré material um, that you basically get when you take uh, two sheets of graphene, you, you perfectly align them and stack them on top of each other, and then you rotate the top layer with respect to the bottom layer. And what happens is that you get this emergent uh, moiré pattern that sort of uh, happens on a, on a much bigger length scale than the atomic length scale. Particularly when you look at this uh, uh, picture here, you see that there are regions where sort of the hexagons of the two layers are perfectly aligned. And these are called the AA regions. But there are other regions where sort of uh, a, a carbon atom of the bottom layer is in the center of the hexagon of the top layer or vice versa. And these are called the, the AB regions. Now, this material was first uh, studied about 10 years ago by, by theorists, in particular uh, Bistritzer and MacDonald, calculated the band structure of this material using a continuum model that doesn't include electron electron interactions. And what they discovered was that the electronic structure of twisted bilayer graphene is, is quite similar to the electronic structure of, of monolayer graphene. In particular, you get Dirac cones at the K and K prime points in the Brion zone. But the interesting uh, difference is that they found that the Fermi velocity of these linear bands depends very sensitively on the twist angle. And in particular, if you, if you uh, look at the so-called magic angle, which is about a twist of 1.1 degree, you find that the Fermi velocity actually vanishes. So here uh, you see sort of band structures, four different twist angles. And if you look sort of at the bottom row, which is close to the magic angle, you see that this, these bands are extremely flat. Now, small Fermi velocity means basically slow electrons, which means sort of that the electrons have little kinetic energy. And in that case, you would expect that electron-electron interactions to play a very important role. So it took experiment um, uh, until 2018 to catch up because it's just very, very difficult to uh, create these sort of precisely aligned bilayers. But well, they finally did that and were able to measure the conductance of uh, magic angle twisted bilayer graphene as a function of uh, the carrier density uh, in the material. And so here is uh, the uh, graph from their nature paper. And the imp most important thing is that you, there are several regions where the conductance vanishes. So there's two regions at plus or minus NS, which is basically when you have completely filled or completely emptied uh, these flat bands. And in that case, the material is just a band insulator. But there are other regions where the conductance vanishes, and that is basically at plus minus NS over two. So which is when you have half filled the flat bands or you half emptied them. And in that case, of course, band theory predicts the system to be a metal. So you can't explain this insulator using band theory. And that's why it's called a correlated or a mud insulator state. Uh, what's even more uh, interesting when they, when they cooled down the material and observed it to be superconducting with a transition temperature of, of a few Kelvin. And so when they put all of that information together, they could make a phase diagram like, like this one, uh, where they have temperature on the y-axis and carrier density on the x-axis. And you see you have this uh, mud insulator phase in the middle. At high temperatures, there are metallic phases, phases. And at lower temperatures, there are these superconducting domes adjacent to the mud insulator. And uh, that, of course, is very reminiscent of the phase diagram of the cuprate materials, which is sort of the a class of materials that have the highest known superconducting transition temperatures, where you also have a, 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 a mud insulator uh, with adjacent superconducting domes. So there was a lot of excitement that one could maybe use twisted bilayer graphene to finally understand uh, the electronic properties of the cuprates, which of course have been debated for, for many decades. 
So the questions that we'd like to answer uh, are, uh, what is the nature of the correlated insulator states? What is the nature of the superconducting state? And how do these states depend on things you can control in experiments like twist angle, doping, temperature, pressure, and these things? But of course, answering these questions is, is quite challenging from a modeling perspective. I mean, one challenge is that you have to deal with very large supercells near the magic angle. There's more than 10,000 carbon atoms in, in, in the Moiré unit cell. And in addition to that, you also have to deal with strong electron correlations. And as, as most of you know, there's no sort of standard off-the-shelf method to, to deal with such a system. So to make progress, we, we try to implement sort of this approach that I'll, I'll describe now. So, so we start with atomistic tight binding to get sort of the non-interacting band structure of these big unit cells. Um, and then we try to develop an effective interacting Hamiltonian for the flat bands only, because those are sort of the interesting degrees of freedom. And we do that by generating Wannier functions for the flat bands and then calculating screened interactions for the electrons in the flat bands. And then this resulting effective Hamiltonian only has a few degrees of freedom and can be you know, uh, analyzed using standard strong correlation methods. So, so that's sort of the grand plan. Uh, but the first step is of course to, to get the Wanye functions of the flat bands. So uh, what we did is we developed an interface from our uh, tight binding code to the uh, Wanye 90 code and then we could sort of calculate these Wanye functions, which are uh, localized orbitals, but they are spread out over the entire 10,000 atom uh, Moiré cell. Now, uh, the interesting properties of these uh, uh, Wanye functions is that they're, they're localized on the AB regions, and you see that these AB regions form sort of an emergent honeycomb lattice, much like the atom atomic lattice of graphene, and this uh, explains why their electronic structure is so similar. Now, if you look at an at a, at a individual Wanye function, like on the right-hand side here, uh, you see that each Wanye function has three lobes, and these lobes are centered on the AA regions, while the overall center, of course, is of the Wanye function is, is the AB spot. So, so they have a very unique structure, these Wanye functions. So with that knowledge, we can start to construct uh, some simple Hamiltonians for uh, the flat bands. Um, so this is probably the simplest one where you just allow hopping from uh, adjacent uh, flat band Wannier functions and you add an on-site Hubbard interaction term. And then you can use uh, techniques like the functional renormalization group uh, to calculate the phase diagram. Uh, so here's the result uh, of, of, of this uh, work where we, have, where, on the, where we have on the x-axis the doping again, on the y-axis temperature, and you see that at half filling we do find a superconducting dome in the vicinity of a mod insulator state. So, um, you know, again, there's this strong similarity to, to the cuprates that we find. In this calculations, we just picked uh, u over t equals two, uh, but of course, you know, both this sort of arbitrary choice for u over t and of the simplicity of the Hamiltonian is something that we wanted to improve upon. So we started to calculate uh, Hubbard parameters, uh, not only on-site, but distance-dependent Hubbard parameters by evaluating these Coulomb matrix elements between different Wannier functions. And the key ingredient is this Coulomb interaction omega, which is, is quite a complicated quantity. Um, you could approximate this by saying it's simply a Coulomb interaction reduced by the dielectric constant of the encapsulating boronitride films. Uh, or alternatively, you could say, I also want to take into account the metallic screening from the metallic gates which are always present in devices because they are needed to um, change the carrier concentration. So we calculated the distant dependent Hubbard parameters for these two interactions. And when we don't include the metallic gates, we get sort of these quite long ranged, uh, slowly decaying Hubbard parameters. 
when we include the metallic gates, we get sort of something that's both quantitatively and qualitatively quite different, uh, which tell, tells you that these gates can be, can be quite important. It also sort of raises the intriguing uh, possibility that you can control electronic correlations in this material through device engineering. So, so to test this hypothesis, we uh, teamed up with an experimental group in, in Barcelona uh, who made three different devices. So uh, device D3 has, uh, sorry, what am I doing? Uh, device D3 has a thickness of this boron nitride film of 12.5 of nanometers. Device D2 has a thickness of 9.8 nanometers. And device D1 has a thickness of 7 nanometers uh, of this uh, boron nitride film that separates the, the bilayer from, from the metallic gates. And then for these three devices, they measured the phase diagram. And uh, for a D3, you see that there are, again, these correlated insulator states, quite a few of them. And in between the correlated insulator states, there are, again, superconducting domes. But now as you reduce uh, the thickness of the boron nitride film, actually, you find that these correlated insulator states disappear. And instead, the superconducting domes uh, grow, grow in size. So, um, so that's very interesting because what it tells you is that superconductivity and uh, correlated insulator states might actually not be uh, strongly linked as, as is the case in the cuprates. So maybe uh, twisted bilayer graphene is actually has, has a different physics uh, than the cuprates. Uh, in the cuprates, of course, uh, the, most people believe that uh, the, the glue that pairs electrons into Cooper pairs are, are sort of damped spin wave from the antiferromagnetic parent state. Um, and that was as one hypothesis also for twisted bilayer graphene. Another hypothesis is of course that, that phonons could be the glue. Uh, but we also discovered a, a third possibility where essentially the glue uh, that pairs electrons could be a, a, a sort of polarization glue. So to explain this a little more, um, so what we did is we calculated uh, the screened electron-electron inter interaction where we now take screening into account, not from the environment as before, but from the electrons in the twisted bilayer itself. So we're talking about internal screening, which we calculated using uh, the so-called random phase approximation. And here we're, I'm showing you a result for uh, the screen interaction as a function of the distance between the two electrons four different twist angles. So the blue curve here is for a twist angle of two degree. And you see that this interaction is always repulsive as you would expect sort of two negative charges to repel each other. But as you approach the magic angle, you see that there is actually an attractive region in the interaction. And of course, this attractive region could potentially give rise to superconductivity. Now, it's also interesting that uh, uh, to, to think about the origin of this attractive region, and we believe this actually has to do with the fact that there is a, a discontinuity uh, as a function of a band energy and the Fermi velocity. So I've told you that the Fermi velocity of the, of the bands close to the Fermi energy is strongly renormalized, but at higher energies, it's not. So there is sort of this discontinuity in the Fermi velocity uh, when you Fourier transform into real space, it gives you these, uh, these attractive regions. So anyway, this, this is all I wanted to say. I, I, I've hopefully shown you that these twisted bilayer materials uh, are, are a new interesting platform for studying electron correlations. They have a simpler chemistry than the cuprates, but you have to deal with larger unit cells. There are uh, interesting new routes to controlling electron-electron interaction through device engineering, but you know, there's many, many things that, that aren't really understood yet. So we're, we're just scratching the surface. Um, this work was done uh, mostly by a, a bright uh, PhD student, Zach Goodwin, whose co-supervisor is uh, Aras Mostofi. And the uh, renormalization group calculations were, were carried out by these two gentlemen, uh, Dante Kennis in Aachen and Christopher uh, Karasch at the University of Braunschweig in Germany. So thanks for your attention. <laughs>